what did it mean to me growing up a Holocaust survivor? To me, it felt like um, confusion. I felt it was so painful that they didn't want to discuss it. And I just couldn't muster the courage to ask. When my parents took ill, I pretty much stopped working to take care of them. Now they're gone. I wanted to see if I could find a living relative. I heard they were in Auschwitz, but I felt compelled to do it for my parents. Welcome to Warsaw. Just landed on the boat. That's what it's like for me. There's a very strong pull that is making me go uh, forward. This fatal here is what I've been waiting for 61 years. This used to be the Zaidman family home, and now it's a parking lot. Come visit the Zaidman home. Come on, come inside, take off your shoes. This is the closest I'll ever be to my grandparents. They're right here. I want to say I love you. Right now, it's an imagination. There's not a grave, there's nothing. We are like forgetting what's real. And if there is no grave, there is no grave. So you are the one who is giving them a story that you can share with the others. My mission now is to retrack those steps, find out what their experience is. I felt like you know, I walked into my family's home. They were very loving. They were really wonderful people. I found two relatives since I came to Israel. It's the only picture of Hava. It's the only picture. Of Hava. Well, all you need is one. I just uh, noticed something very, very disturbing. A Nazi insignia. Everything nice I said about this cemetery, I'm taking back. Now it's being neglected and disrespected by, by being left alone. Think well, let's it. do something about it. Yeah, let's go. It's like two stories, one of uh, torture and then survival and hope. I, I don't think I, I wanted to uh, go through my whole life without connecting with my ancestry. Now you have your life and their life, and what happened in between is what you're trying to understand. Sure. Do you think you can do that today? No. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so either.